All right, 15D is about bivariate data. By meaning two, two variables. Okay, so it says bivariate data also involves the use of correlation and a line of best fit. Bivariate data includes data for two variables. They are usually related to each other, such as people's height and weight. A scatter plot is the graph of, on the number line where the two axes have the variables which correspond to the two variables in the bivariate data. The word relationship, correlation and association are used to describe the way in which the variables are related. So here we have some graphs of some types of correlations that are a rough guide only. Um, so the closer the dots resemble a straight line, the stronger the correlation is. So we've got a pretty strong positive correlation here because they are definitely making a, um, a straight line and the dots are all nice and close together. The one next to it is also positive, but it's a little bit weaker because we have a few more of the points um, scattering a bit there, particularly at the top end of the data. Then we'd have down here a negative correlation because it's more of a negative sloping line that, that is making. Um, and then this one here would have no correlation at all. You could pretty much draw any line through that so there's no, there's no solid information as to where you would draw a line through that to try and get a line that best fit. So that's why we said there's no correlation. Now, if we were to try to measure the strength of the, co the correlation, we have what is called Pearson's correlation coefficient, which is given the letter R. If R is equal to one, it means all the points lie on a perfectly straight line and they increase together. So if X is increasing, Y is increasing in a perfectly straight line. If R is equal to negative one, the points again are on a perfectly straight line with one increasing, but the other is decreasing. So that's our negative gradient. If we go to the in-between where R is equal to zero, that's where there is no linear relationship whatsoever between the two variables like that last little graph there. Now, obviously you're not always gonna have one of those three perfect scenarios. You're going to have maybe a decimal in between, a 0 0.85 or something. What would that look like? We're not going to be calculating those today. We're saving that for our last exercise of the topic, but we're just knowing that they do exist for now. Okay, an outlier can be clearly seen as a, as a data point that is isolated from the rest of the data. So this one here, often when you see a result that is like that, when everything else, like, it looks like there could be hundreds of results in the rest of that um, data there. If you see one way out there like that, Sometimes as a statistician, they might go, well, what caused that one to be way out there by itself? Is it a valid result? Um, maybe it should be excluded. Maybe there was something faulty with the equipment when they were measuring whatever that was. Maybe um, someone filled something in wrong in a form. Okay, so you've got to start to question as to why there is this outlier, if it is something that has been measured, and then you have to decide whether or not that data should be included or not. But anyway, that's what an outlier is. When bivariate data have strong linear correlation, we can model the data with a straight line. So we're gonna be doing that, which means we're going to be putting in a line of best fit, which can also be called a regression line or a trend line. The line of best fit is positioned by eye by balancing the number of points above the line with the number of points below the line. Okay, so we always try to make sure it's balanced above and below, but we're going to have to find the equation of these lines. So you do want to make sure that it goes through two of those points so that you can find that equation. The distance of each point from the trend line needs to be taken into account. The equation of the line of best fit can be found using our two point formula, which is this one here, y minus y equals n back at x minus x1. You'll probably also have to use the gradient formula to find the gradient first. The line of best fit and its equation can be used for interpolation, which is when you are using points within your data range to predict a result. 
or you could use it for extrapolation which means that you need to extend your line of best fit outside of the range of results that you currently have and you're kind of doing something ex ex external, so extrapolating, going further in your range. Okay, so you need to know those words. All right, examples. Consider the variables for x and y in the corresponding bivariate data. Draw the scatter plot for the data. Okay, so we're going to have the x-axis down here, and we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're going to have our y-axis up here, and our highest value is 5. I'm going to go a bit further in case I have to do some extrapolating, though. Okay, if I plot those points, I have first point is 1, 1, so put a dot. Second point is 2, 2, that seems too good to be true, doesn't it? Next point is 3, 2, there we go, that's not a perfect line anymore. 4, 3, 5, 4, 6, 4, and 7, 5. It is definitely making a positive correlation. It's not quite perfect, but it is reasonably strong there. Okay, part B. Is there a positive, negative, or no correlation between the X and the Y? Positive. Fit a line of best fit by I to the data on the scatter plot. Okay, so remember, we're doing it by eye, but we're being mindful of trying to keep an even number of points above and below. How about that? That's pretty good, doesn't it? And I need to make sure I go through at least two of the points so that I could potentially, do I have to do that? Oh, I don't have to do that for this question. But if I had to find a line, of, uh, the equation of the line, I'd be able to do that. Okay, so where I've got that, I am going through three dots. Two of them are above and two of them are below, and the spacing is reasonably good. So I'm going to draw my line through there. Also try to make sure that the two above and the two below, it's not two above at the low end and two, two above at the low end, two <laughs> under on the high end or the other way around. you got to try, otherwise you're twisting your line, which you don't want to do that either. Okay, so there's my line of best fit, and here comes some estimating that we need to do. Use your line of best fit to estimate y if x is equal to 3.5. So x is equal to 3.5 is there. I'm going to come up to my line and across to the y-axis, and try to read off that number as best as I can. It's going to be approximate, it's not perfect. What do you think? 2.7? All right. So y equals 2.7. Seems reasonable. Okay, find y when x is equal to 0. x is equal to 0, it would be right there. It's right on it's my y intercept. What do we think that is? Yeah, 0.4, that'll do, close enough. Okay, uh, find x when y is equal to 1.5. So 1.5 dots across. What do we think that is? 1.8 maybe. That would be an x value. And lastly, when y equals 5.5. So across from the 5.5. Try and keep it nice and straight. Probably should be using a ruler here. Oh, is that going to hit in front of that line or after that line? I think I've gone upward slightly. Oh no, now my line's gone. There it is, it's back. About there. Definitely should have used a ruler. I think mine went a bit high. I think it should be a bit lower than that. What do you guys think it looks like on yours? Okay, good job, all right, let's do that. X equals 7.7. .7. All right, so it's not, it's definitely not perfect. And the other thing that is not good about those questions is if I gave you that question on a test, pretty much guaranteed that 
I will get a lot of different variations of where your line of best fit would be, which means all of you are going to give me different results. Okay, so probably not something that would be a really good question to put on a test or the HSC because they're not going to enjoy having to check lots and lots of people's different solutions. So something like this can be a lot more useful where the scatter plot is already drawn and the line of best fit is already drawn for you as well. So it says the scatter plot shows the linear relationship between the maths marks and the science marks for a small class of students. A trend line passes through the point 3020. So that would have to be that one there. 3020. And another point, which must be that one there, which would be 5050. Okay, so when they drew that line of best fit, they've made sure they went through two points. And those two points are the ones that we're going to be able to use. So down here, part A, it says find the equation of the trend line. I need to use the point gradient formula, but before I do that, I'm going to have to know the gradient. So I need M equals Y2 take Y1 over X2 take X1. So if you want to label these, we'll have X1, Y1, X2, Y2 to sub those in. So Y2 is 50 minus 20 over the X2 is 50 minus 30. And then that simplifies down to 3 over 2. Or I prefer not to go to a decimal knowing that we need to keep going. Then to find the equation of our line, y take y1 equals m bracket x take x1, my point gradient formula. I'm going to use the same x1, y1 as before. It would still work if you used the other point, however. So it's going to be y take away 20 equals m, which is 3 over 2, x takes 30, close bracket. Expand it out y take 20 equals 3 over 2x minus 30 divided by 2 is 15. 15 times 3 is 45. Okay, and then just move your 20 across the other side so that's a y equals equation. 3 over 2x minus 45 plus 20 makes negative 25. Okay, so there is my equation of my trend line in gradient intercept form. Then we could use that line to accurately find um, what the, the line of best fit would predict for these couple of scenarios here. So it says use your equation to estimate the maths mark if the science mark was 30. Now maths was the x axis and science was the y axis. So if the science mark was 30, that 30 is the y in the equation. Okay, so when y equals 30 into my line of best fit there, I get 30 equals 3 over 2x minus 25, and I'm rearranging that to solve for x. So add the 25 over would be 55. And then if you divide by 3 over 2, has anyone done this? I got 36 and 2 thirds. Okay. So that's not something that we could read off of our graph that accurately. And to be honest, we couldn't expect that to be perfect. This wasn't a perfect correlation but it is accurate based on our line of best fit. Question C, use your equation to estimate the science mark given that the maths mark was 90. So that is the X because we're given maths score this time. So let's put that into our equation. So we're um, putting in when X equals 90 and we get Y equals three over two times 90 minus 25, which is 110. If these are percentages, we have a problem. But anyway, maybe they're not percentages. But that's what the equation predicts. Okay. All right. So that's it.